All right, James chapter 4, starting at verse 1, stopping wherever God leads. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not even of your lust that war in your members? Ye lust and have not. Ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not. Let me say that again. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not. Because you ask not. You ask not and receive not. Because you ask amiss, erroneously, that ye may consume it upon your lust. Now, <laughs> ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Do you think that the scripture saith in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? But he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God. And he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Mm, mm, mm. I'm going to uh, skip to verse 10 real quick. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. One of the hardest things for us to do as a, as a human species is... Okay, let's say Lynn and I just get through having a little a little exchange. And I and 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 Lynn, you know, kind of gets on my nerves and I kind of get on her nerves and we're both getting a little hot up under the collar. And we say some things in the heat of passion. Which one of us is going to apologize first? Whoever is the most humble. Because when you're humble, it doesn't matter who's right. And it doesn't matter who's wrong. What matters is reconciliation, forgiveness, love, appreciation of each other, and our relationship. If Rashad drives his truck and bumps into my car and puts a dent in it, how will I respond? Now, as the Bible says, faith without works is dead. So I can say I believe in Jesus Christ. And the Bible also says the devils believe too. They tremble. Mm. But faith without works is dead. So if Rashad bumps into my car, puts a dent, puts a scratch, whatever, and I see him doing it, and I walk up to him. Am I going to be angry? What's my response going to be? Am I going to cuss him out? Tell him what he did wrong behind the wheel? I was watching you. You weren't paying attention. What's wrong with you? Where'd you get your license? At Target? Or am I going to try to calm him down? Because he's going to be nervous. Afraid I'll be angry. Am I going to calm him down and say, it's just a piece of metal, baby, just as long as you're not hurt. Don't worry about it. How am I going to respond? <clears throat> See, a lot of times, the muscle we exercise the most is what we're best at. What muscle do you exercise the most? They say the tongue is very strong. So is the jaw. It can resist, I think, 45, 50, or 60 pounds just in a bite. Imagine what weight your words carry. Add to your words attitude. And imagine how that can affect so many people's lives. For the good 
or for the bad. So we have to be careful to show where our faith is because what we truly believe will dictate how we truly react. You hear me? So we have to constantly do a self-analysis and check ourselves. See, the pursuit to holiness can feel like a tightrope to some. And if it feels like a tightrope, here's the reason. Because your flesh is warring against your spirit man. And there's a battle going on. It's called a tug of war. Your flesh wants its way and your spirit wants God's way. And it's a constant struggle. That is how a tightrope walk feels. Your muscles are all tense, just trying to keep your balance, doing everything you can not to fall. You can't hold a conversation. You got to concentrate on getting across unscathed. It's a very tense, very arduous, very frustrating, fearful, scary endeavor to cross from one side to the other on a tightrope. Some of us, our walk with the Lord feels like a constant struggle, feels like a tightrope. And when you go through that, my question to you is, number one, where truly is your faith? And number two, what part of your flesh are you really battling with if you were to really be honest? Now, I don't know. I'm just bringing the message. I'm delivering the mail. So I'm not all in your Kool-Aid, as Lynette says. <laughs> I don't know. I don't have a clue. I don't even have a clue who this message is for. But when you find that life is nerve-wracking, that life hurts, that life is difficult, that life is frustrating, it's, it's a... It's an, a major undertaking. It's a, oh my goodness, it's a major feat to overcome. What happens? Oh, how can I say this, Lord? Help me with this. What happens is there's something in you that God is saying, that's what I want to deal with. I say all the time, the fewer the scars you have psychologically and emotionally, the fewer the things in life will bother you. Mm -hmm. the, the fewer the scars that are still open, runny wounds, very tender, very sensitive areas, the fewer you have of those the less people will annoy you. The less people's words and actions will offend you. The more healing, the less pain. The more healing and wholeness you get from God, the less life bothers you. And it starts to feeling like you're sailing. You know that song, Sailing. I can't even think of the melody. I love that song. Imagine that feeling of sailing through life versus the tight rope. I cannot fall. I cannot look to the left and I cannot look to the right. And I've got to be very careful and oh, don't distract me. Shut up. Everybody, shut up. Very difficult. Very difficult. And God wants us to have life and that more abundantly, which means peace that passes all understanding. The joy of the Lord, joy unspeakable, full of glory. He wants us to get along with each other, not bite and devour one another. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. See, a lot of us live in a, a life of strife and confrontation 
What you say? What you mean by that? Oh, no, I know you didn't say that to me. Something wrong with you, baby cakes. You talking to me? Come on, you want to take it outside? Yeah. Oh, well, we can handle it right here. And it makes no difference to me. Because when I get through, you're going to be peeling yourself up on off the floor. Now, where's that come from? Hmm. Yeah. You're the only one you should be fighting? D-E-V-I-L. Or S-E-L-F. Those are the two you ought to be fighting. You never should fight God. You never should fight each other. See, because the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. You see somebody's dander rising, they're getting upset. What should you be doing under your breath? Put up the firewall, baby. I bind that spirit in the name of Jesus. And I bind anger in me. I, I will not react. Cover me, Lord, in the blood of Jesus. Firewall, you're resisting the devil. What does the Bible say? You resist the devil, he will flee. That's what it is. See, this walk with the Lord is not just about a bunch of do's and don'ts, y'all. God stacks the cards in our favor. We've got all kind of little goodies up our sleeve that comes from the Holy Spirit. That comes from the name of Jesus. Supernatural power takes us way beyond ourselves. Way beyond our own limits. Mm -hmm. But you've got to seek, search, read, pray, and ask. You have not cause you ask not. I can tell you, I can tell Lynette and I can tell Matt, okay, you guys, look, I just went to the dealership. I bought two cars. You guys go to the dealership, check it out. And you decide between the two of you, which one, who's going to have what? Are you going to go to the dealership or are you going to say a pet talking out the side of her neck? I know she's joking. <laughs> See, the way that you prove your what that you believe what I said is when you go down to the dealership. Check it out. Mm -hmm. Give him your name. Pat Love told me to come down here. And they'll say, oh, you're so-and-so. Come on, let me show you. Mm -hmm. See, a lot of things we don't have, a lot of, as I call the, Oh, the, um, mm, mm, mm. that thing that we have that overcomes life. If we don't exercise it, baby, that muscle atrophies and we end up getting weaker rather than stronger. Sometimes we can exercise our tongue and that can be the strongest muscle in the body, even stronger than your heart. Sometimes your attitude is the thing you exercise the most rather than using self-control and prayer to keep yourself at bay from letting Jack jump out the box. So we have to constantly ask God for help. It's not a tightrope. It's not a tightrope. It's a litany of requests. Your request should go to God all day long. Lord, I hear what they're saying. And if I listen too hard, it's going to hurt my feelings, which is going to make me angry. Shield me from that, Lord. Firewall. Prayer. I rebuke anger and oversensitivity. Firewall. Taking authority. Resisting the devil. Ask God to teach you how to utilize the firewall so that you do not give place to the devil in any way, shape, or form. It may feel good to your flesh to cuss somebody out or knock them on their fanny.
but it doesn't feel good to God to see you behave that way. And it doesn't do you any good because every time you give in to the flesh, you're cracking that door wider and wider for the devil to come in and make himself at home inside of you. Amen? You don't want to do that. Because Satan, as Lynn says, is not your friend. God bless you. I hope that helps. As we lead the sanctuary, as we go our separate ways, may God favor us upon thee. May he cover you with his grace. Whoa, I'll be praying for you. Oh, please be praying for me. Me, yeah. May God keep us all in the palm of his hand till we're together again. Together again.